G'day, it's Clint Patterson here. Today I want to talk about antibiotics and the likelihood of developing rheumatoid arthritis based on taking antibiotics because a study has just come out in the BMC Medicine Journal uh, published August 2019 and it confirms what I've been saying for the past seven or eight years which is that time and time again I see coming up in people's histories uh, an overuse or an unusually high frequency use of antibiotics and then a later development of rheumatoid arthritis. And in my particular case, I took five years of antibiotics as a teenager to combat acne. And that same doxycycline that I took, I then took for another three months, 10 years later, uh, as an anti-malaria strategy when I went to the Middle East. And it was after that second three month dose, about six months later, I developed rheumatoid arthritis. So myself and so many others that I uh, note in their history have an antibiotic overuse. Um, and it, uh, it's always made me uh, have the commentary that antibiotics are a strong um, factor when it comes to developing RA. And this study that's just come out has 100% confirmed that. Um, before I go into the details of this study, which won't take long, um, I also want to uh, maybe remind you of another situation of antibiotic use. Uh, Katie, who was on our podcast, she's been doing tremendously well. Uh, Katie provided a two-year update on our podcast um, where she dug into her medical history a little bit more with notes that her mother had taken and she found. Uh, and so she uh, said she was born healthy and then at two months old, she had her first ear infection. They put me on antibiotics for the ear infection. A couple of months after that, another ear infection. They put me on more antibiotics. And then a month after that, another ear infection. She was on more antibiotics. And then a month after that, she developed a swollen ankle, which was the first symptom of rheumatoid arthritis. And that was at 10 months old. And now, I think at age 27, uh, so she's had rheumatoid arthritis her entire life. So I just wanted to um, single out Katie amongst the you know many many people that I could have chosen uh, as another example of, of having antibiotic use and developing RA um, I just want to single her out because just to show the impact that like you know Katie's whole life affected by those uh, antibiotic uh, interventions and uh, I'm not criticizing the medical community I want to raise awareness about the risks involved so that great Great care and consideration is taken when antibiotics are presented as to whether or not they certainly are indeed required. Um, and I'm not commenting on whether or not uh, KDs were required, but you can see the connection there. So let's go into this study. It's quite a fascinating one. Uh, it's very simple, but but it, the, what it, the implications are just so significant and so the study if you're listening to this and you want to find it it's the antibiotic use and the risk of rheumatoid arthritis a population based case control study again published bmc medicine 2019 august 7th the lead researcher was a abdul sultan and what are the results well what they did is they identified 22,677 cases of ra uh, by going through medical data in the United Kingdom and what they did is they matched those people with RA to people of the same age and same sex that did not have rheumatoid arthritis and then they ran some statistical analysis and said okay let's look back from the diagnosis date 10 years and see whether or not um, the uh, there was some kind of correlation between taking antibiotics and developing RA well there certainly was uh, normally with these kind of studies well, not these kind, but normally with so many scientific publications, the results are mild or they call them statistically insignificant. And in this case, we have a wildly statistically significant outcome, something that's just profoundly clear. So the odds of developing RA were 60% higher of those exposed to antibiotics within the last 10 years than those not exposed. And that was just from one exposure. And there was a frequency dependent association between the number of antibiotic prescriptions in RA. So the more prescriptions, the more likelihood. And 
all types of antibiotics were associated with increased risk. So there's no good antibiotic that you can take that's uh, you know, not going to do any negative damage to your microbiome. Um, and also the um, recency of the dosage uh, also mattered. So if you only took the antibiotic in over the last year, that also was a higher statistically uh, likelihood of developing RA. Okay, so um, th this study, which you, if you want to read, you can go and find yourself uh, and go through it, really just talks about how it impacts the microbiome and how the uh, negative impacts uh, tie into um, autoimmunity. So what do you do if you already have rheumatoid arthritis? And we can see how really impactful the antibiotic use is. Well, uh, in my frequently asked question list here, which you can access uh, inside Patterson Program Support, and if you're not a member of Patterson Program Support, um, then I invite you to come and get some help. Uh, but if, you, if you're not a member, then um, you can access this FAQ in your materials, Patterson Program materials, the advanced package or essential package. So go into your FAQ. Uh, you'll see this is a, um, a very, very comprehensive and ever-expanding um, FAQ that I create all the content here. These aren't just links to websites and junk. This is uh, um, really my information, my answers in here. Go into antibiotics and... I have, after the first section here, another section called antibiotics. Do you need to take them short term? And if you need to take antibiotics short term, then you should look at this as an acute uh, health situation that needs to be addressed before you get back onto your long-term uh, healing journey. Okay, so always when we have something that comes up that's an acute issue with our health, that has to be the priority uh, and the RA stuff can wait and we can get back on that healing path after we address our short-term issue. So if we must take antibiotics and it's the only way forward, then we must. Um, and then to minimize them, what we can do is we can eat um, quality miso paste. Uh, we can eat fermented vegetables like sauerkraut or kimchi. We can take non-dairy probiotics and it doesn't matter whether or not you take the uh, refrigerated or non-refrigerated. They're just different technologies of antibiotic preparation, sorry, probiotic uh, preparation. Uh, so no problem there. And in fact, the shelf stable probiotics are the newer technology and lots of leafy greens. So we're talking about prebiotics here. We're talking about food for your gut bacteria because when the numbers are down, you want to uh, uh, make sure they're getting lots and lots and lots of food that they want to eat and then they will proliferate themselves quite rapidly. But the general uh, feeling is amongst the medical community is it can take a few months for your microbiome to recover from antibiotic treatment. Okay, so when you've got an autoimmune disease, we ain't got two months to wait before we start to get rid of some of the inflammation that results from having a disrupted microbiome. So we want to get onto this right away. And I recommend that even during the antibiotic dose, dosage period that we are increasing our probiotic and prebiotic intake. The only thing that may be of concern is we uh, potentially want to just separate the probiotics from the antibiotics because we don't want to um, potentially uh, negate the medical intervention. So we want those antibiotics to kill the bacterial overgrowth or the bacterial pathogens that they are being taken for. So let's do that and then maybe three, four, five hours away from the antibiotic dose then you can take your probiotics, eat your fermented vegetables and so on. Okay, so that's my thoughts on this. And then this should be kept up for three to four weeks after the antibiotics are finished because it just takes so long for the microbiome to recover and we just want to be on the safe side. And there's no reason to even stop this heavy bacterial rich um, sort of protocol. Uh, I've been taking miso paste for years um, I don't eat it every day like I used to, but uh, it was certainly part of my life for, for many years. Um, probiotics, every now and then, I have them in the cupboard. Uh, I don't take them religiously, but used to take a ton of them. And uh, leafy greens all the time, lunch and dinner every meal. So um, hopefully this video has been helpful. Just to recap, 
what I've been saying for a very long time, that antibiotics keep showing up in clients' histories as a significant um, factor in their later onset in rheumatoid arthritis has been confirmed and the statistical significance is immense, a 60% increase in if you took uh, antibiotics within the last 10 years uh, increases by 60% your chance of developing rheumatoid arthritis. And, and just so you get your head around that so that doesn't sound like astronomical, it's a big number, but let's say the chance of developing RA is 1% in a Western country, um, then, you know, you, you now might be between, you know, one, one or 2% if you've gone up six or well, 1.6%. Okay. So, um, you haven't gone, you know, it's gone from like a small percentage chance of getting the disease to a small plus 60%, still a little bit, just a tiny bit more, but that 60% is obviously a big deal when you're talking about getting a disease that you absolutely under no circumstances would ever want to have a risk of getting. All right, so we've uh, we've established that that's now um, published literature and confirms what I've been saying for a long time. And we've got a strategy uh, for what to do if uh, we have to take antibiotics short term. Okay, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it's helpful. And uh, if you're on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, make sure you subscribe and uh, these videos will come straight to you in your inbox. Bye for now.